Recently, I watched a video that showed a road trip along the Trans-Canada Highway from Toronto to Vancouver. It was incredible seeing Canada's natural beauty. Uh, it was a wonderful experience just watching the video, never mind actually doing the road trip. But in that video, I noticed there was a train track that was kind of running concurrent to the road. And I asked on that video, can you kind of go from Toronto to Vancouver by train? And the answer is yes. Someone recommended this video. It's actually a first class train across Canada, four nights, 97 hours. And this, this as I said, is from Toronto to Vancouver. So look, can't wait to see this. A first class train. Obviously it's going to be high quality, but the, the views, everything else is going to be great as well. So looking forward to seeing this. Tell me if you've either did the road trip or the train journey. After seeing the road trip, I feel like it's an actual ambition of mine to do one of these. So looking forward to learning more about the train journey itself. Welcome on board this first class train across Canada. The Canadian is one of the world's longest and most scenic rail journeys. Whoa. And over the next four days and four nights, we'll journey across Canada eating, drinking and sleeping on board the train and we'll do it in the most luxurious way you can prestige class. Hello Jet Setters, I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. This is the Canadian and you're coming along. Here's the plan. We'll leave on Wednesday morning, travel across five provinces through vast forests, over endless prairies and climb breathtaking mountain passes. All in, we'll cover nearly 3,000 miles over almost 100 hours to reach Vancouver on Sunday morning. And it's on that last day from Jasper to Vancouver where we encounter the most epic, sustained scenery we've ever seen from the rails. Don't miss it. But for now, it's back to Toronto. Yeah, that's the one I want to see. Like, I like the way that it goes from Toronto to Vancouver. So you're coming through that forested area from Toronto, through the, the beautiful prairies, into those like, amazing mountainous region or areas within uh, Vancouver, the national parks and so on. And yeah, what I want to know about this is, this is obviously first class, he said prestige. I'd love to know how much this actually costs to do. I guess we might find out. Toronto Union Station is Canada's largest. It was built in 1927 and still reflects the grandeur of that age. Mm. Love that architecture. This station is incredible. It's beautiful in here. It's North America's second busiest station behind New York's Penn Station. And passengers okay. traveling in sleeper accommodations on the Canadian have access to the business lounge. That's us. It's a very nice space. I am beyond excited. It's about time to board. We're making our way out to gate 17 for this departure across Canada. Train one, not two, not three, train one. Here it is, the Canadian, about to get on board. The longest train by far we've ever taken. And the longest train in North America too. It's time to get on, so uh, let's head back there. All aboard. This is always the most exciting part of any rail journey, getting to see the train for the first time. And this is a beautiful machine. We're in the very last car, the park car, right by the bar. So it'll be interesting to see what that experience is like. All of Via Rail's park cars are named for national parks. Ours, Glacier Park, was built in 1954. Now, there are two rooms in this car, one for passengers in wheelchairs, and the other, this one, will be ours. Oh, TV. Wow, this is nice. There's a tremendous sofa in its daytime configuration, Finishings. a window half the size of Canada itself, and loads of other amenities we'll explore a little later in the journey. But for now, it's time to check out the rest of the park car. So our room is in the very last car on the train, which is the park car, and it has this bullet lounge uh, in the back of it. But the best part of it, well, that's up here. It's up these stairs, look at this. Up here, you will find this incredible dome with this unbelievable views. I think this is where we're gonna live on this train journey. All right, we haven't left yet, but uh, first impressions of the train, Suzanne. It's beautiful, like it feels historic, but really nicely appointed. And I think we might have the best room on the train. This is a really cool car. Yeah, it's so convenient to be right back here. Um, there's a big tour group that's occupying the rest of Prestige Class, so we're the only solo, well, <laughs> duo uh, by ourselves. Back downstairs, there's additional seating in the bar. There were always snacks available here. Uh, by the way, drinks, snacks, and meals are included with Prestige tickets. Oh, and, and there's pretty much always hot coffee available back here too. Really luxurious. 
We pulled out of Toronto Union Station right on time at 9.55 a.m. And if everything goes according to plan, we'll step back off the train in Vancouver in about 97 hours. I think like when you say 97 hours, it does seem like a long time just to be on a train. I'm sure there'll be stops here and there, of course, but when you see the, the room, the amenities, just having the food and the drink and things like that, even just spend the time sitting in there when you're seeing so much natural beauty outside of the window, I feel like it would just fly by. I feel like 97 hours probably is not even enough time to just really appreciate every sight that the train goes by. There aren't that many trains where you can look out the front and the back. This is going to be epic. It is our pleasure to welcome you on board train number one, the Canadian, en route to Vancouver. As the train's two locomotives and 20 cars eased out of Toronto, we enjoyed an unmatched view of the CN Tower, the Western Hemisphere's tallest freestanding tower, before toasting our journey with mimosas, of course. The service team passed around canapes and our journey began in earnest. Nice. We're not going to be hungry on this trip. Back in the station, we'd been asked what time we wanted to eat. We could choose an early seating or a later one. Not sure what to go with, we just chose to eat early. Lunch at 11 and dinner at around 5. It's time for our first meal. I think we're going to have something like 12, 13, 15, I don't know, a lot of meals on this train. But it's time for the first one. It's lunch. Let's go check it out. The dining car is nicely appointed and white tablecloths add a touch of class. Menus change each meal and drinks are available at no additional cost. You see the food here, pulled pork sandwich, shrimp and scallops, pasta, veggie burger. For dinner we got, oh, that's, I guess in French. So yeah, really good choice of things as well. For me definitely it's the pulled pork sandwich but decent selection there and I'm sure it's good quality as well. Prestige passengers. You won't be surprised to learn that only Canadian wines are served on board. Is Can How is Canadian wine? Is it really good? Suzanne opted for the veggie burger while I picked the pulled pork. Both sandwiches were filling and flavorful. After lunch, we made our way back to the park car, which is closed off to the rest of the passengers on board until 4 p.m. each day. This seems like a good time to check out our cabin. Hey, come on in. Look at this space. This Via Rail prestige room is incredible. This sofa is so comfortable. Up here is some storage for the bedding, which folds down from here at night. On prestige class, you don't have a train attendant. No, you have a concierge who comes in and sets up your room at night, takes care of any requests you might have. This is truly first class. Mm -hmm. Now, there are also tons of buttons. You can change the lighting settings, the temperature, but my favorite, is that the bathroom floor is heated. So all you have to do is press that button and the heat in the bathroom floor turns on. How great is that? Nice. Over here, there's a little bit of a cabinet. You call it now, it says it's a cooler, but it doesn't seem to keep anything that, that cool. So it's just a, a nice cabinet. Also, my first experience on a train with a TV. Apparently it's got movies preloaded. And check out this washroom. This is the only category of room on the train that has its own shower en suite. It's so amazing to be able to have this amount of, uh, this, this number of amenities to yourself on this train. But doubtless, the best amenity is this massive window. Now, a fair amount of time on this trip will be spent waiting for freight traffic. These stops aren't usually more than 20 minutes or so, and if they do last longer than that, there's usually an announcement about what's going on. This is about to pull into our first stop, Wishago, Ontario. 64 more to go after this one. <laughs> to be fair, we probably won't make all of those stops since many are only by request. However, there are several stops with enough time for everyone to get out and stretch their legs. Some, like in Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Edmonton, and Jasper are scheduled for several hours to allow work on the train and slack in the schedule. So if we're on time, we'll be able to get out in those cities and explore the area around the station. I have to admit, I did not have high expectations for the first part of this journey in terms of scenery. We're most excited about the views through the mountains of Alberta and British Columbia. But Northern Ontario really impressed me. This is a beautiful part of the world. In fact, the province is home to more than a quarter million lakes and contains one-fifth of the world's fresh water. 
something look Lake Superior, I think that is. But the thing I like about this this journey especially is this is very unique. You can't drive here, of course, so you're seeing things that not a lot of people have actually seen. Only people have taken this journey, uh, especially along this whole uh, track as well. So seeing just things like this being in, in the middle of this forested area is actually quite a unique experience, but you can see the beauty that maybe not a lot of people see, especially if people are driving or just never been to this area before. Oh. Welcome to Perry Sound, Ontario. The trestle we're on here was completed in 1907 and is 105 feet tall. The view is extraordinary. So Each afternoon around 3.30 or so, the service team would present a plate of canapes to prestige guests. These were always a welcome treat, and we enjoyed sharing our plate in the park car's bullet lounge. The views from here are really special. We also enjoyed lingering here before heading back to our room to regroup for dinner. So at four days and four nights, this train is by far the longest one we've ever been on. What's your longest so far? Uh, that'd be the Texas Eagle, which was right at three nights. Okay, and mine, I think it's the Empire Builder, which was two nights, maybe two and a half days. This is a full four days and four nights. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to ignore the fact that we are crossing the second largest country in the world. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's time for dinner, so <laughs> let's go grab it. It's five o'clock, just so you know. We accidentally picked the early seating, so it's uh, actually not even five o'clock and we've got to go eat. We're still learning how things happen on a Canadian. We found selecting our seating time each day to be a bit of a guessing game. We wanted to avoid eating during fresh air breaks, but it wasn't always clear when those would come because of unpredictable delays. We did our best. A first course is offered exclusively to prestige guests. It was caviar tonight, which it Mix. turned out Suzanne doesn't really care for. Oh well, three more dinners means three more chances. At each dinner, you're able to choose a starter course, usually soup or salad, and a main as well. Suzanne's chicken was moist and tasty, and my steak well, it was perfectly prepared. You can also have dessert, which we almost always skipped. We just passed through Sudbury, Ontario, home to the late great Alex Trebek, who is the best game show host ever. We just got back from our first dinner on Via Rail. What did you think? I thought it was really good. My steak was incredibly well cooked, very juicy and tender. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. What do you think? Meal two out of twelve. It was a good one. About nine hours into our trip, we reached Cape Real, our first fresh air break. With no Wi-Fi on board and spotty cell phone coverage, reaching these larger communities often meant a chance to reconnect with the outside world. First opportunity to get out and uh, kind of experience the uh, warm summer weather here in Canada, but also to check out the train. This thing is huge. There are four dome cars, activity cars sometimes they're called. It's a big train, uh, but it feels so good to get out and just experience it all. This is always one of my favorite parts of any train journey. It's pretty smoky here. Yeah, we certainly uh, really feel for everybody suffering from the wildfires going on in Canada. Um, we're glad to be here and grateful to see the country, but sorry to see so much of it hurting. So our thoughts are out to, to all of you. It's been just terrible, so hopefully it'll improve soon. But uh, they're about to call all aboard, so let's get back on that train. Yeah, see before, the thing I like would, like one of the re main reasons I would want to do one of these road trips or these train journeys is to even if it's just ten, like a small stop like that, just stopping in these small towns, being in places that are like, you would never ordinarily stop in, just even getting a little, like even if it's like five or 10 minutes, just being somewhere different. Uh, I think that's one of the big attractions to these sort of journeys. Shortly after pulling out of Cape Real, the sunset began. We intentionally chose to travel in summer in order to maximize daylight. Now, I'm sure Canada looks amazing blanketed in winter snowfall, but we wanted to see as much as we could, so we traveled over the summer solstice in June, and that turned out to be one of the best rail-related decisions we've ever made, especially on our last night, coming out of Kamloops. If you like these views, just wait for Alberta and British Columbia. After that unforgettable sunset, the room has been completely transformed. Check out this bed. What you can't see is just how comfortable the mattress is. It's probably the best one I've ever experienced on a train. You know it's first class when there's chocolates on the pillow. 
but it's been a long day. Well, good night. Good morning. It's about 5.30 here in the parked car. I enjoyed about seven hours of sleep. Suzanne's still resting. Uh, service begins on the train at 6.30, and we set our clocks back overnight as we've entered uh, this part of Canada central time zone. Mm, so I've pretty much got this place to myself zones, for maybe another hour as I uh, enjoy this scenery. Let's get the day started. The Canadian currently operates twice a week and is extremely full. Sleeper accommodations are hard to come by, especially in summer. Be sure to book in advance. Now, as we'd mentioned earlier, the rest of Prestige was filled by a tour group who weren't quite as early risers as me. Apparently, it's quite common, and we were able to book our room with Via Rail because someone on their tour had cancelled. Now, everyone, including their guide, was extremely welcoming to us. And to that point, you'll most likely share your table at mealtimes with other passengers, but those conversations are a highlight of the experience. Before too long, though, I had company. I just leave. I would say the bed was more spacious than I expected, so I could sit fairly well. How about you? How I agree, you? and I, the other thing I think it's worth saying is that mattress is super comfortable. I think one of the most comfortable mattresses I've ever experienced on any train, plane, or automobile. How about you? And here we are, beautiful morning on the Canadian day two. Day two commencing. And that can mean only one thing breakfast. Unlike lunch and dinner, you won't need reservations. Instead, it's offered on a first-come, first-served basis. And back in the park car, there are options for a lighter approach to starting the day, too. We just got an announcement that there's been an incident ahead with a freight train uh, which caused a backlog. So we've been sitting here for, well, a good couple hours. Uh, second freight train just passed and we're moving again, so hopefully we'll be back on our way. Uh, when it comes to rail travel, you just sort of got to take what you can get, especially when you're in a passenger train on freight tracks. That's okay. We'll get there when we get there. We've pretty much been hanging out in the park car. It's pretty awesome, uh, really, and it's fortunate that our room is right here, but that's time to go check out the rest of the train. Let's, uh, let's go on an exploration. In front of the park car where we're staying, there are two prestige cars, each with six cabins. Then comes one of two dining cars, the one we were assigned. It also houses a kitchen behind the wall there on the left. That leads us to a Skyline car. There's seating here, coffee, snacks, and best of all, a dome. Our train had a total of three of these cars. Via Rail staff offered activities in here like trivia and bingo, along with lectures throughout the journey. Downstairs, there were plenty of games and even books. There's always something happening here. The train had several sleeper cars, which offer both berths, which can be cordoned off by a curtain, and sleeper plus cabins with doors. Now those cabins include bunk beds, sink, and toilet, but no shower. There are shared showers and washrooms in the sleeper cars though. There were also two economy coaches, which offered two by two seating. Back to our cabin. At 70 square feet, these rooms are 50% larger than the sleeper plus cabins, and as you've seen, include your own private washroom and shower. Again, all of your meals plus beverages are included in the fare. Now we paid about 4,500 US dollars per person for this. 4,500 USD, so actually, yeah, quite pricey, but when you're thinking about it, it's pretty much a four day, all inclusive holiday. You're getting your accommodation, your food, everything's covered. I think actually, I mean, not only all of that sort of thing, but the experience itself, that is definitely worth 4,500. I wonder if like you can just do one room for one person, or does it have to be two people per room, so that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, that for me, that's actually very affordable for what it is, for the experience. Now, we don't usually talk about price in our videos since it changes so often depending on so many factors, but do you think we should include it moving forward? Let us know in the comments below. We made our way back to the Bullet Lounge as we passed by Armstrong. You know, many of the stops on the Canadian's route are by request. Campers or locals will call ahead and let Via Rail know they need to be picked up or dropped off at one of these stops, and the engineers will take care of it. Otherwise, the train just rolls on through. Oh, wouldn't you know it, lunchtime. 
It's the falafel wrap for Suzanne. I just had that for lunch for for me. But both of us love this scenery. We headed back up to the dome in the park car and arrived just in time for something really exciting. Well, that was pretty exciting. Via rail number two, uh, they are less delayed than we are, which is why they pulled off on the siding and we're continuing our journey west, running about two hours behind right now. And those delays continued as we encountered even more freight traffic. By this point, we were about four hours delayed when we crossed this bridge and made the stop at Allen Water. Life on this train is a constant kind of rotation between the park car, our room, the dining room, pretty much so far. But now we're gonna try something new. Yeah, we're headed up to, uh, I think, play some bingo, is that right? Hopefully, we'll see how it goes. Spoiler alert, not to brag or anything, but I'm pretty good at bingo. <laughs> you ready? You, you, you know it's a game <laughs> chance, right? <laughs> you would think that. <laughs> Earlier, on our walk through the train, we'd noticed this board in the Skyline car closest to us, so we decided to return. The seats in the dome here in the Skyline car offer much more legroom, by the way, than the ones in the park car. We settled in before receiving our cards. I just got the winning card. The games lasted about an hour and got pretty intense at times. We were so close to winning. What do you think of your first train bingo experience? I think my skills really do translate across borders, really. I mean, I was <laughs> one away from winning Whoa, every really? single game. Really impressive work. I was really proud to be married to you. <laughs> I, uh, I really, I realized the reason I asked you to marry me, just those skills. We headed back to the Bullet Lounge for canapes just before another fresh air break. Welcome to Sioux Lookout, Ontario. Mm. One thing you gotta love about Canadian train stations, one side the train, the other side, it's wilderness. These stops last about 20 minutes, enough time to get out and stretch our legs before heading back out. And we're on our way out of Sioux Lookout. Unfortunately, we're running like three, maybe four hours late, which means we're not going to get to Winnipeg until after midnight, we think. And that's too late for us. So unfortunately, we'll have to make a return trip to Winnipeg. For now, it's time for dinner. Dates wrapped in bacon to start chicken for me, fish for Suzanne. The quality of the food looks fantastic. While we were at dinner, the concierge turned our room into a comfortable place to rest. But let's get specific about the size of this bed. It's time for the greener grass measuring tape. How big is this big bed? Let's find out. It's too big for the measuring tape. Well, 60 plus 12 is 72 inches. It's 72 inches long. 52 inches wide. That's one inch for every week of the year. That makes this bed closest to a full-size bed. Reddit, the stop we just made, is normally about three hours to Winnipeg. It's eight o'clock now, which means we won't get to Winnipeg until 11 o'clock at the earliest. I think it's fair to say we're not gonna make it, but that's okay. There's still plenty to do and see from here. I'm sorry to miss the town, but We'll make it up to you, Winnipeggers, Winnipegians, people of Winnipeg. I want to apologize for our delayed operate operations today due to the significant amount of freight traffic that we encountered overnight this morning. Also wanted to inform you that the entire crew will be changing at Winnipeg tonight. Well, it's almost 10 o'clock, but we're setting the clocks back, so 9 o'clock. It's time for bed. See you in the morning. Yeah, that looked like they were moving more into the prairie land, the flatlands as well. So, I mean, really enjoy the scenery here. Again, I like how Canada's like these really quite, almost three quite distinct uh, landscapes along this journey. Uh, it would be really cool uh, to see uh, the differences. I guess we're going to see the more, the prairie land, which will be beautiful as well. One of my new favorite sort of places to explore. Good morning to the park car. It's about explore. 5.15. I had another seven hours of sleep. We're well and truly in the Canadian prairies. Mm. About an hour and a half to Melville. Start of day three on the Canadian. At this point, it's just you, me, a cup of coffee, and the sunrise. Oh, 
That just sounds so perfect, man. The sunrise, having a coffee, seeing All told, these we were about four places. hours late getting into Winnipeg last night. But thanks to the hard work of the crew, the train was now only running about an hour late. Now, our train was scheduled to stop in Winnipeg for two hours last night, and a lot has to be done in that time. Not only did we get an all-new crew to take us on to Vancouver, but the train was refueled and more water was added. Further, fresh linens, food, and drinks were brought on board, too. Loads of work was done while Suzanne and I slept. Welcome to Melville. While we're here to enjoy the experience and the scenery, many passengers use it as means of public transportation, which is why it's subsidized by the Canadian government. Mm. One of our favorite activities on board was watching out for animals, and we saw plenty. There's even a bear in our not-too-distant future. It is always a luxury to have a shower in your room, and this is one of the nicest ones we've ever seen. Get this, it even has a heated floor. So, as we begin the third day in the third province, Saskatchewan, on board the Canadian, it's time to shower up. Space is always at a premium on any train, but this is super comfortable. It has all the room you need to take a great shower. I feel Definitely. so much better now. Who's ready for a train hot tip? So obviously the less luggage you bring into your room, the more space you're gonna have to enjoy and stretch out. So we both brought carry-on bags um, onto this train. You could also check bags if you want to. But here's the tip, bring a smaller bag kind of to leave out during the day. Um, maybe put your pajamas in there, a fresh change of clothes. So you don't have to go and rummage through your luggage every single time you want to get something. It's actually tough at night when the bed is folded down and your luggages are stowed away. In past videos, I've outed Suzanne as an engineer. And uh, here's even more proof of her skill set at solving problems. This light was shining in her eyes, but she fixed it. What did you use in your, uh, your uh, design there? How to make do with what you have on a train. It was a gut wrapper and um, some like makeshift tape off this uh, chocolate box. Whatever it takes. <laughs> The endless views of prairies and farms were a welcome change from the last couple of days. But we were also very excited as our next stop approached quickly. We are just pulling in to the station here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. We get about 30 minutes out on the platform. Definitely looking forward to some fresh air and the opportunity to move around a little bit. Welcome to Saskatoon. Unfortunately, this station is out in kind of an industrial area rather than downtown. As the team added fuel, we hopped back on the train for lunch. Suzanne and I both had the ginger beef, one of our favorite meals so far. Yeah, just look at that landscape. I mean, that is just like insanely beautiful. The sky, the grass. That's why, like, the more I learn about the prairies, the more I want to, the more I want to learn more and more, like, and just appreciate its beauty. Being there would just be a next level experience. Back in the U.S., we'd call this area the Plains, but here in Canada, they're known as the Prairies. And while I was really enjoying the views from today, it's tomorrow that I'm even more excited about. In fact, the primary reason British Columbia, which we'll visit tomorrow, agreed to join Canada was because the country's promise to connect its Pacific coastline to the east by rail. Mm, okay. That finally happened in the late 1800s thanks to the Canadian Pacific Railway. The Canadian Northern Railway grew up a few decades later with track farther north. And by 1977, all passenger networks were unified under a government corporation we know today as Via Rail. Back to the present day, where it was time for canapes and a carnival in Wainwright, Alberta. It's just about time for dinner on day three here on the Canadian. Kind of yeah, so beautiful. a day full of prairies and farms. It kind of reminds me of that scenery uh, on the Empire Builder through North Dakota and the first half of Montana. Yeah. Quite beautiful, quite different than yesterday. It's big sky country, just uh, Canadian style. But you can feel the excitement building for the uh, entry into the Rockies tomorrow. I'm ready, but uh, first, dinner. Things kicked off with bruschetta. Prime rib for me. 
and Suzanne had chicken with local Saskatoon berries and Canadian lentils. Yeah, so I was going to ask, I wonder if they, because they're moving into like Alberta, I wonder if it's Alberta beef got the Saskatoon berries there anyway. So it's like quite cool if the ingredients were to match the province that the train was in for the food. I don't know if that's the case, but obviously with the berries, that is just where they've came from anyway. We even split dessert, a carrot cake, cheesecake. <laughs> The As Edmonton came into view, well. the bed was calling our name. We've just reached Edmonton. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's a little late and we are ready for bed. We'll be here on the platform for about an hour. We're going to go to sleep. You see, tomorrow morning we're waking up super early for a good long visit to Jasper. See you tomorrow. We set the alarm for 4.30 this morning in order to get up here to this dome car and enjoy these views coming into, into the mountains and I am sure we're about to be richly rewarded. Right now sure. there's still a bit of cloud in. Okay, the it's a bit out there. Let's get another day started. So atmospheric, whoa. And what a day it would be. It turned out that day four on the Canadian was about to rank as one of the most visually stunning days of our lives. Oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. This is what I think of when I think of Canada. Definitely an early morning, day four on the Canadian, but well worth it. Mm -hmm. I um, kind of put the shade up in our room and was rewarded with these beautiful mountain views already, just a sign of what's to come today. I'm so psyched. The sun came up and we made our way into the Canadian Rockies and the town of Jasper where the train would receive service for around three hours while we would be free to explore. Mm. Canada's sun. The Canadian Rockies are only about 75 miles wide here, but the rest of the day will be spent traversing a series of other mountain ranges. Inspired in the grass covered landing strip called Jasper Airport. We got a beautiful, clear view of Mount Robeson, the highest point in the Canadian Rockies. We arrived here in Jasper about 6 a.m., but the station doesn't open until 6.30. So we're hanging out here, waiting for them to open the doors, and then we'll uh, go explore town a little bit. Hope you'll join us. And just like that, we're off the train here in Jasper. It feels good again to be uh, stretching our legs. A little cooler up here than yesterday in Saskatoon, which I am happy about. There was actually a snowfall. It is currently June, and there was a snowfall just a couple of days ago. So we're gonna get out in town, check it out, maybe grab some breakfast and some coffee, but uh, for now, it's just, Wonderful to be off the train seeing beautiful Jasper. The train station is our entrance to the town. Built in 1926, it was declared a heritage rail station in 1992. What a stunning morning and what a great opportunity to get off the train. You really don't get these opportunities on Amtrak. Maybe the max would be like about an hour of a stop. This is about a three hour stop, so we're really getting a chance to get out this more a little bit. I mean, like, not only is the location like just breathtaking there, but I really love those buildings, the architecture. Uh, as I mentioned, one thing I like about these small Canadian towns is they have very unique architecture. Some of it can be a bit uh, a bit older and things, but they preserve it so well that like you already see that with the train station and the other buildings there. Imagine like just walking about. I mean, the train journey is amazing as it is, but walking about these like place like Jasper, surrounded by those mountains. Such a quaint little town as well. And what a morning to do it. It is absolutely beautiful out here. If it weren't 7.30 in the morning, we'd have a toast to Mike Downey in there, but alas. There was a continental breakfast on board, but we chose to head into town and check out Coco's Cafe instead. 
Suzanne's breakfast bagel was fresh. Those tomatoes were juicy. And my wrap was really nice. That was a really tasty breakfast. The eastbound train arrives here at Jasper at 11 o'clock in the morning when more shops and museums and restaurants would be open. Unfortunately, we're here a little earlier, which means pretty much everything's closed. But that's okay. We really wanted to travel from east to west so that we could have our uh, sort of grand finale crescendo be what we're going to see today. When you're in the mountains, you got to get out and do a little hiking, especially when you've been sitting on the train for the last three days. So let's uh, take, take a little stroll. Just a few blocks from the train station, we found the Jasper Discovery Trail. It wasn't very difficult, but gave us a flavor for hiking in this part of the world. It's always good to be in nature, and also, it's nice to be able to move around after a few days on the train. Sadly, we had to cut our hike short and make our way back to the train, where we toasted an on-time departure and even more views. Many of the trains that come through here carry grain, and some of it falls out as they pass. This easy-to-access food can be awfully appealing to the local wildlife, Whoa, like this nice. black bear. <laughs> we eased past via rail train number two. This one left Vancouver for Toronto at 3 o'clock yesterday, while we were still in Saskatchewan. The crystal clear waters of Yellowhead Lake were remarkable, but they were no match for the breathtaking beauty we saw on Moose Lake. These two glacier-fed lakes just outside Jasper have to be some of the most beautiful in Canada, maybe even the world. Definitely the world. The brilliant blue-green color of this water is thanks to fine particles of pulverized rock that absorb and scatter sunlight in ways that can give it this striking color. Thanks to our location in the park car, we could easily get views from the back of the train, which meant a breathtaking perspective on Mount Robson, the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. The morning seemed to quite literally fly by. There was never a dull moment. It's definitely not easy to pull ourselves away from these views, uh, but uh, it's time for lunch. Thankfully, there are windows in the dining car, too. We're gonna head that way. Again, an early morning continental breakfast had been on offer, so the menu today offered both breakfast and lunch options. Suzanne had the pasta, and I went for the chicken pot pie. As usual, both were hearty. But you better believe we got back upstairs just as soon as we could. And lucky for us, we were just in time for a spectacular view of Pyramid Falls at the left side of the train. From being five hours behind schedule on day two to now being ahead of schedule, we're just sort of sitting here enjoying the scenery in this part of uh, British Columbia. Just shows you how much, well, either how much slack there is in the Via Rail schedule or just how long this rail journey is. Either way, I'm enjoying the views and I hope you will too. We even spotted the Rocky Mountaineer making its trek from Vancouver to Jasper. We want to travel with them in Canada soon, but in the meantime, don't miss our video about their service from Denver to Moab in the United States. I'll link to it in the description below. Before long, the afternoon had slipped by and it was time for a wine tasting to accompany our canapes. How first class is that sentence? Although Canada may not be known for wine, that hasn't stopped Via Rail from highlighting it. We tried a Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and a Banco Noir. After our first time tasting wine on the train, I've got to say the Banco Noir, which is a new to me grape, was my favorite. I think I'm going to have a glass now. Sauvignon Blanc for me. Wine tasting with your canapes in the prestige uh, level of a like train across Canada, man, like. Life doesn't get much better than that. That is fantastic. Again, tell me more about Canadian wine. I'm really intrigued uh, to know where is it produced in Canada? How does it taste? What's your favourite Canadian wine? When we sat down for dinner, we almost immediately arrived in Kamloops, 
home to Rocky Mountaineer's maintenance facility. A shrimp and crab appetizer preceded soup and a salad. I had the lamb, and Suzanne, she had the salmon. Well, it's fair to say we have eaten really well on this trip. What was your favorite meal of this trip? I think my favorite was dinner the other night with the chicken, with the sassy food and berries, and Canadian lentils. I appreciate that local flair that put on some of the meals. My favorite was like the furthest thing from local, and it was the ginger beef we had for lunch the other day. That was really nice. It's very tasty. It's really been impressive, the food they prepare on this train. Initially, we were sorry to have missed the fresh air break here in Kamloops, but ultimately, Having an earlier dinner turned out to be one of the best decisions we've ever made. We're about to experience one of the most beautiful things we've ever seen from the rails. We had zero expectations for this section coming out of Kamloops. We thought the best was behind us. But this track, on the banks of the Kamloops Lake and then along the Thompson and Fraser Rivers, is as beautiful as anything we've ever seen from a train. And sometimes, pictures just need to speak for themselves. Remember how British Columbia joining Canada was dependent on this rail link? Well, with the incredible engineering you see here, it's pretty clear just how important it was to link east and west. Overall, this has been an amazing journey. We were, of course, most excited about the scenery on this day, but every part has been incredible. From the lakes and trees of Ontario, to the prairies of Manitoba and Saskatchewan, on through to the rugged mountains of Alberta and British Columbia, it's all been remarkable. And the service from the entire Via Rail team has been next level. Their dedication to customer service is a testament to the warmth of the Canadian people. Overall, this is a trip every rail enthusiast really needs to add to their bucket list. What we have just seen is some of the most amazing scenery we've seen on any train anywhere, is that right? Absolutely. I mean, this whole day has really encompassed what the rail zone is. Like, I can't think of one other day on a train that it was just this stunning and magnificent. From moment one to just now, I mean, it's it's been absolutely unbelievable. It's time for one more night of sleep and a quick breakfast, then we're off this train. Back up in the uh, park car observation dome for the last time, and the view here of Vancouver Station is sure different than some of the wild and wonderful things we've seen on this journey, there can be no doubt. This is one of the world's greatest rail journeys. Thank you so much for coming along. After four days, four nights, and 2,775 miles, welcome to Vancouver. Between now and the next time, see you on the rails. Via rail prestige. I'm sorry about that. How did you mentally prepare for this? I, I did not. There was, I, I packed a bag and got on the train. All right, I didn't plan this. Let's, let's start over. Ooh, a duck. A lot of smokers of all kinds of things, so we're going to head back in. <laughs> nice t-shirt. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. So wonderful to be out here in nature and enjoying all that uh, nature can provide. <laughs> Jasper, where nature is in your backyard. Yeah. Ah, very refreshing. Nice. Sauvignon Blanc from the Okinawa home. <laughs> Excellent video. Go subscribe to their channel. I'll leave the link to the video in the description. So, excellent video. Very well produced. Great hosts, man. They were really wholesome and enjoyable to watch. A great way to journey along Canada, through Canada, from Toronto to Vancouver. Wow, that's like, that's made me like, is it like, made me want to do that journey. That feels like it would be, it needs to be an ambition of mine now to like target. I need to do this at some point in my life, man. It just seems so breathtaking. Such a like once in a lifetime uh, experience. I mean, especially in that first class prestige, 4,500 USD. 
it's pricey, but I feel like it's this thing that you'll just remember forever. Just the train and the sights as well. So tell me if you've ever did anything like this. I mean, whether it's the road trip or the train journey, even if it's not prestige, whatever level have you made this journey, what was it like to do that in person? Uh, just experiencing it through a video was like exciting and enjoyable enough. So I can only imagine what it's like to do it in person. So that's the beauty of Canada there, encapsulated in a train journey. And yeah, one day I'll do it. Thanks.